Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. I want to thank everyone who is participating in the Christmas Ornament Wood Turning Challenge. We're seeing some really neat stuff and a lot of variety and a lot of creativity. It's really fantastic. I mean, if you haven't already, you owe yourself to take a look at the playlist, which I'll post, and then keep at it because it isn't closed yet. But we'll announce the winners once it's done. But I want to put in one more for myself and that is a sea urchin ornament. Now I've made these before but recently saw Rex Burningham and he helped me refine the technique a little bit so it's uh, very much along his lines except that I didn't use a single ten, uh, piece of wood for the finials. This is actually walnut and a pen blank. Now the reason I wanted the walnut in there is that the pen blank is not big enough to handle the entire opening that comes on the shell. So I did it a two piece and or three piece and put it together. Along the style though and I, I think it helped uh, to refine it a little bit more. So here's a sea urchin ornament that we can make right now. Before I started my wife coated the inside of the sea urchin shell with white glue. This makes it just a little less fragile. Now I need to ensure the top and bottom holes are uniform circles. Previously I had turned a short cone on a wood faceplate and put strips of pressure sensitive adhesive sandpaper on the cone. But that did not work. So I adopted Rex Burningham's technique of applying double sided tape under the sandpaper. Finally I could sand the insides of the top and bottom holes to get them even. I'm gluing a small piece of walnut to a faceplate with CA glue. I have to fit the tenon to the bottom shell hole. Fortunately, I can do this in reverse. I'm using a bedan, which is new to me. I tried to find some good descriptions on how best to use it, but nobody agreed. So I'm using it like a straight across skew, and it's working great. After fitting the shell and drilling a hole for the finials, I'm finishing this side in case I cannot get to it later. Then part it off and reverse it into the long neck jaws. I won't worry about marring this surface because it will be out of sight inside the shell. Then finish the visible portion. For the finials, I started with a pen blank of some unnamed tropical hardwood. As usual, the first order of business is to turn a tenon on the end and remount the wood securely in the chuck. I decided to use my large skew for this part. I'll work the tenon on the top finial first. I'm sizing the mounting tenon first with my end wrench tenon cutters, then clean up the area with a bedan and part it off. Since the pen blank is already mounted, I set the top finial aside for now and worked on the bottom finial. Since the bedan is handy, I'm using it to rough cut the tenon. Then switch to the tenon cutters. Once I'm sure the tenon fits the walnut, I'm finishing this surface before flipping it around again in the chuck. After a little more work with the bedan, 
I'm switching to my small skew. After refining the shape to the taste, I'm sanding and finishing this bottom finial. Now to finish the top finial that I had set aside earlier. I'm drilling a hole for the top hanging loop. I'm sizing this to have the a lip to support the sea urchin shell. Then turn some decoration before sanding and finishing the finial. Then with just a little trimming and gluing, my Sputnik Sea Urchin ornament is finished. I'll add it to my collection of Christmas ornaments. Here's a big thank you to all of you who have made Christmas ornaments for this year's challenge. There's lots of great work and variety of ornaments to view. With this diversity, I'm not looking forward to judging the challenge, but it will be fun anyway. If you have not already subscribed, please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Here's me nagging you. Always wear your face shield. I hope you never have to thank me later for nagging. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns.